Hi, I'm Dr. Heather Bartos. I'm an OBGYN and sexologist, I guess I'll say, located just outside Dallas, Texas. Awesome. Well, we're so happy to have you on today because we really want to get into nipple gasms. We've mm -hmm. heard about it a few times from a few different guests, but never explored it because we're like, what the fuck is that? It's like, <laughs> how? How do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> um, but before that excitement, <laughs> I think it can be a little nerve wracking to have someone hyper focus on your nipples sometimes if you're a little insecure. So can we talk about like nipple normalization, areola normalization, kind of how everything looks? <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, nipples are a lot like vulvas, you know, everyone's kind of worried these days about how does my vulva look, you know, and that's the outer lips of the vagina. I know we kind of call all of that down there vagina, but it's actually the lips on the outside are called the vulva and everyone's worried about how theirs compares to everyone else. I get that question all the time. Does mine look okay? Does mine look old? Does mine look, and I'm like, there's no norm for vulvas. We don't have vulva beauty pageants. We don't, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is down there, you know? And I think a lot of that has been done by probably men, you know, over years that we think we have to look a certain way and, oh my gosh, there's a gray hair down there, or there's some saggage after a couple of babies or whatever. We somehow feel like it's less than she still does a great job and nipples are the same way. And the nipple is actually the part that kind of sticks out, you know, the part that gets erect. And then the areola is kind of her sister around there. It's kind of like the Christmas tree with the Christmas tree skirt. <laughs> and the Christmas tree skirt is the one that we always talk about. That's the round wide part mm -hmm. that has like the little bumps in it. Sometimes women always ask me what those are. And those are normal areolar anatomy. And, you know, I think what's really interesting about areola is they had kind of a heyday a couple of years ago because there was a company that would match your areola color. And they would say that was your perfect lipstick color. And they were matching areola colors for lipsticks. Oh, my God. I, I know. I never did it, but I, I'm now regretting it. I really want one. <laughs> I know. They say it's the perfect color for your lips, whatever your areola. And I can't talk about breasts without like pointing at mine a lot or even touching them. So I'll be touching them the whole time we're talking today. Um, so, um, but yeah, the areola is, it can get bigger in pregnancy. It can get smaller um, after menopause. It can get darker. In some women, they have a disorder called Raynaud's, which actually is a blood circulation issue. And it can actually get very small and blue. So the areola tells us a lot about what's going on with our hormonal health as well. Wow. I literally had no idea it could be so telling and kind of like shape shift. Yeah. <laughs> oh my insane. God. So what did you say that the bumps around your areola were? So those are called Montgomery ducks and they're basically just, just glands that we have there on the outside. And they're kind of like a barometer for what's going on around the breast. And they tell the breast kind of what to do because the breast's main function, main function in life, of course, is to produce milk for an offspring. Um, and so they're there to kind of help that process along. They're not necessary. And sometimes they can get clogged. I know a lot of women asking about nipple hair and, oh my gosh, this hair sprouted up. And is that normal? And a random hair here and there is completely, completely normal. Um, a whole row of hairs, not as normal. We usually will look into hormonal health for that. But yeah, everyone kind of has that, like that random chin hair that shows up every now and then that like you pluck out like in the school line while you're waiting for your kid. <laughs> Same thing with the, I wouldn't pluck the nipple hair while you're waiting in the car for your kid, but without your, maybe not while you're waiting chin for your hair, kid. totally fine. <laughs> Around yeah. Restraining order is going to happen if you start plucking out your nipple hair on the school line. <laughs> Just a PSA. I remember when I was like starting to go through puberty and I started to get those little bumps around my nipples. And I like was really scared. And I told my mom and then she asked the doctor, like, what are these? And she was like, Oh, that means, uh, her breasts are going to start growing. And we never really came we through. Really <laughs> and it, just, it felt really, uh, exactly like I was set up and I mean, they grew a little bit, but, uh, I always thought like when a new one came, I'm like, that means they're about to get way bigger. Um, wow. and that I'm never, praying. I know it was oh. not it's funny. Probably should have used, like matured as opposed to grown because right. We yeah. all think bigger is, is better. Yeah. Um, and certainly back when we were all younger, boobs were the thing. I mean, that was it. 
Yeah. Now it's butts, but, but back then it was boobs. I know. Yeah. My, my need and want for boobs still hasn't gone away. <laughs> I really want them. That used to be the only thing I'd pray for when I was a kid. And I, when I would pray, I'd be like, I just really want boobs. I just really want boobs. Your entire relationship with God. <laughs> Solely based on getting tits. That's and awkward. that's why you're not very religious anymore. I know. <laughs> that's yeah. not really what you build a religion on. He kicked me out of Christianity. Yeah. Like, you're done. You're done. You're done. <laughs> anyway. Well, from nipples to... God, let's go back. <laughs> let's go back to nipples. Um, okay. Thank you so much for all of that. I didn't know any no. of that. That no. is so important. I had no idea that it was an indication of health. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about playing with them. So <laughs> mm -hmm. nipple play. What is that? Why should we be exploring it? Yeah, because it's it really not something I've ever... Spent too much time too on. much time on yeah I've like kind it, of it's kind of like the forgotten part of the show and you know if you guys were friends devotees and you remember when Monica did the seven erogenous zones and she was like there was a one a one two one two three and one of those was the nipples but of course then she went with the seven 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 you know and then the number seven is we've been taught that that's where all the pleasure is is down south in the vaginal area and with the clitoris and everything but the nipple is, is kind of, it's higher up, closer to the brain where a lot of our pleasure hormones come from. And even when we're nursing, you know, we release oxytocin while we're nursing, which is what bonds us with our babies. And it's also what makes breastfeeding not suck terribly. That's the same hormone we release when we're orgasming down South. So the hormones are really the same. And when we kind of skip that part, we're missing a whole bunch of other erogenous areas. And the good news, maybe it's the bad news, is that men and women that both have nipples can both experience good nipple play and both have nipple gasms. That was my next question. Was that is it solely focused on like the bigger nipples that like women typically mm -hmm. have? Um, or can like men enjoy nipple play too? Because I feel like I've like, it's fun, you know, when you're like kissing a chest or something. And like, I was like, I don't know, this could be fun, but I don't know if I'm just like licking skin and they're like, what the fuck are you doing? Or if it's because it's so small, it's like, are you getting any pleasure? From this? I feel yes. like silly. <laughs> They, they have the same kind of framework as, you know, we do. And then nipples are actually um, kind of set up in the womb before we ever have a gender assigned to us, really. So um, so that's why men and women both have nipples. You know, it's like, you know, meet the parents. Well, I have nipples. Can you milk me, Greg? You know, that whole thing. And and the men don't have nipples physiologically speaking for, for milking needs, um, but they have it for other needs. And so they absolutely can feel pleasure, but it's going to be really strange for them and, and awkward in the beginning because they're not used to thinking about their nipples as, as an area. I mean, we see porn and we see that men, you know, touching boobs. And so it's always about these women's boobs. Like we both said, you know, we wanted bigger boobs because it was like a, like a trophy. See, I'm still touching my boobs. <laughs> and, um, but no one ever talks or no one ever, in, in, even in like porn, even looks at men's nipples or does anything with them. So it's going to be very awkward for men to kind of go there. Um, but it's kind of a fun, erogenous little foreplay to kind of see what happens when we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we are using it within foreplay, like how do we touch the nipple? Like what are some good ways to stimulate and get pleasure from it? Yeah. So, you know, the nipple is in, in my opinion, kind of a lot like the clitoris. I wouldn't compare it to a penis because that's like, you know, it's up and it's going, but the clitoris, and we talk about this when, when we train kind of people on cutting lingus and, you know, you don't just sit there and just, it's not an ice cream cone. You don't just sit there and just <laughs> lot, 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 lick it and you don't bite it, but sometimes it's the mix up, right? It's the, it's the, it's the kind of the buffet of things that you can do to the nipple, like the clitoris. Um, that really makes it kind of exciting. So it may be circular tongue action. It may be a small, small nibble, you know, just like guys don't like their penis nibbled on women don't like their clitoris nibbled on ouch, you know, a small little, eh, but not the, 
the, you know, the eight month old infant bite um, is a good thing to try. Sometimes actually playing with the areola. Sometimes you can actually just use your finger just to kind of get things kind of moving in a circular fashion too, kind of like you're masturbating a clitoris. And, you know, cause we tell women before they have children, if you want to start contractions, if you want to start your uterus to work, you can sit there and actually either put on a breast pump or you can actually, we call it tune in Tokyo when we're telling them to do this, but basically get out some olive oil and start kind of just massaging the nipples a little bit and they can do kind of circular. And again, I don't know if everyone can, I'm actually doing all this to myself. <laughs> On, um, on this, but you can go circular. Some women like just to go back and forth. I mean, very similar to masturbating your clitoris. It's kind of how that you would approach that for the nipple. Okay. That's a great description. I love when we can connect things like that. It's like, okay, we have done an episode on, you know, going down on somebody. Let's apply some of that knowledge. And I love all of your examples. Mm -hmm. So many things to do. I have so many things to do. And all those can still apply to like a smaller male nipple as well. Like back and forth and circular. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, everyone's a little different. Like um, my husband won't listen to this podcast because he doesn't, that's our rule that we have is he doesn't listen to anything that I do because I'm probably talking about him. Um, <laughs> but he has, he always has very erect. They're like, we call them carrot nipples. My son calls them carrot nipples in our house because they're always very erect. And and so they're almost like desensitized. They're almost like callous sometimes, kind of like a breastfeeding mom, like that's always being used. So he actually likes a firmer kind of pinch, touch, bite on the nipples. If there's anyone that to me, I'd probably send them through the roof. I'd be like, get <laughs> off. What the fuck is that? I mean, like, it's, mine is a lot more sensitive, you know, like, I'm like, no, no, don't, don't touch, don't touch. So it's really kind of finding out, you know, it's kind of a fun, find out what your partner's into by saying, let's try this and let's see what you tell me what you like. It's a good communication tool too, mm -hmm. because we're not down in your muff and you're trying to explain what to do. They're up right there. And so there's a lot more intimacy communication. Yeah. If you are specifically using your fingers or your hands, is it good to get lube involved? I think it's always nice to get some lube involved. And I, you know, I'm not a fan of the KY astroglide. I mean, even for nipples, you can use, you know, coconut oil, um, an olive oil. I wouldn't go with that really smelly extra virgin. It's good for pasta, but it's always smells like you're cooking. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't do that. Um, but any kind of oil-based lube for the nipples, I mean, it's just moisturizing too. Um, there's even things like bio oil, which you can get, you know, over the counter places. And it's actually really um, moisturizing too. So, um, yeah, I think, I think lube is always a good idea for everything. Yeah. And thank you for specifying oil based ones too, because mm -hmm. I feel like I never really buy those because with condoms, you know, you can't really use those together, but that could be good for other areas of the body. Well, and I'm thinking about one that we do use often is we oh, the foria. are foria oil mm -hmm. and it has right. CBD in it mm -hmm. and the arousal oil. That would be yeah. so fun. Cause that, that was be another question that we had is like kind of incorporating poise and different things because there's the, what is that stuff that you got? Uh, the, the candle massage or what are you talking the, about? like cooling nipple stuff. Oh, nipple bomb, like nipple chat yeah. thing. I don't even know. Yeah. That was interesting. You know, and you think about some of the movies back, you know, again, when boobs were really kind of mainstream, you know, back in the day, like I'm talking about 80s. You guys may not have been born then, but it was, um, you know, poor, all the movies were about boobs. It was like you stared, and I just thought boobs were fascinating back then, but nine and a half weeks, I mean, they did the ice cube and the hot wax and all that on the nipple play. And then now you never see boobs in movies really anymore. I mean, you might get a gratuitous dick shot or, you know, a vagina shot, but you don't ever really, no one really focuses on the breasts anymore, but it's like a lost opportunity because- they're pretty amazing. I still agree. <laughs> I also concur. <laughs> so with, if we want to incorporate ice or maybe hot wax, so would we just be like, you know, with ice going around the nipple, doing the same type of thing that you would with a finger or with a tongue. And then how would you use the hot wax? Yeah. So I would say, I mean, again, if your partner, if you're new to this, so like, let's say, you know, it's, it's going to be Saturday night and you're like, okay, we're going to try this. This is going to be our gameplay tonight is I would have a variety of things out <laughs> and 
and see how far you want to go and your partner wants to go with it because they may try one thing and they're like, this is not comfortable yet, in which case then great, you know, consent's always big, we stop. But I think doing the ice is traveling it up kind of the abdomen, you know, all the way up and you can circle around because the nipple is much more sensitive to cold and heat than the, than the skin is. So start going with circles, maybe around the whole breast and then work your way in almost like a cinnamon roll, kind of work your way on into the nipple. Then you can even hold it up and just let it cool on the nipple for a little bit. <laughs> cinnamon roll. We hope this is going to be on YouTube so everyone can see this part because it's so graphic. Um, so then you can actually just rest it there. You can hold it up and let the cold water drip on it because that's always just fucking sexy too. It looks really cool. And then the hot wax, you know, you want to switch from cold to hot sometimes pretty quickly. So then you can bring out the wax again. I would start on wax dripping on areas that are a little bit more, that can take the heat a little bit easier, yeah. like skin first to say, is this okay? Is this not, it's not too hot because you know, you can burn those areas. So, yeah. and then I would just do the drips on the nipples and then, you know, you can sit there and play and crack it off and just, you know, you could do chocolate syrup. You could do whipped cream, just do you know, whipped cream yeah. nipples and go to town. Um, I think your CBD oil is great. I would definitely use arousal creams for that too, because it's an erectile tissue, just like everything else. Arousal oh. cream. That could be good too. Yeah. Oh, fun. Are there any other, you said, um, like chocolate sauce or something, but any other like warm options that aren't wax, if like fire isn't. <laughs> That's your little fondue pot next to yeah. you, you know, your little, your little crock pot. Yeah, I mean, you know, people are in all kinds of different things. And so the two of you may be like, you know what we love? We both love queso. Let's do queso on our nipples. I mean, it can be anything, you know, of course it can always get messy. So we want to put down towels and that kind of stuff, but yeah, anything really is as long as it's not something that's going to burn is totally on the table. You know, when I got married, I wanted a ranch fountain and they wouldn't make me one. Cause I, want, I loved ranch dressing so much. I didn't want chocolate. I want a ranch. So I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm going to break out the ranch tonight for nipple play. You know what I mean? Anything goes. Oh my God. I love a ranch fountain. I'm pissed that they didn't make that for you. Yeah. They wouldn't, you know, yes. <laughs> that's so upsetting. Also you were the bride and nothing should be told. No. Like, yeah. And I, I am, um, I'm still bitter about it as you can see. So totally. you deserve to be now we're, yeah. Now you have no. a team of bitter people on your side. You. That is get right. one just to own in the house. Just do it myself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just need bigger, probably like nozzles. I don't know. Maybe not. It's not that different than chocolate. Just keep thinking yeah. about it. I'm just bringing it out. You'll I'll let you problem. know. We'll yeah. engineer this. We'll engineer yeah. this. Well, yeah. 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 We can make a, a huge killing. <laughs> Do you have any like toy suggestions? So we've heard nipple clamps before. Um, I haven't necessarily tried those. They seem a little intense. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've tried like nipple balm. That's kind of like minty, which is, which is fun. It only lasted maybe a couple minutes, but are there yeah. any other toys that we could try out um, from like a sex store? That would be good. Yeah. I mean, nipple clamps, they're pretty clampy. If I can just use that adjective, yeah. I mean, they're, they're good on a very erect nipple because there's some tissue to push back on the clamp a little bit, but mm -hmm. if you weren't raring to go yet and your nipples were still kind of non-erect, it would, you would not probably like it. Um, there is a, there is a, a product called screen cream. It's usually a compounded prescription that we use for clitoral enlargement that has an arginine paste in it. So it actually helps blood flow, which you could use on your nipples as well. It wouldn't hurt anything. And it just kind of make that arousal kind of like your minty product, but it would just bring blood flow faster. And arginine is a amino acid that helps with blood flow products. Um, and sometimes there's actually the whole breast kind of tie up clamp again, holding my boob here. Um, this is hot. This is sexy, right? <laughs> I'm thinking right now she is so sexy. Um, so, you know, tying up the breasts a little bit will actually, so if you see them, they'll tie up kind of like this little bandeau top around the breasts and that actually will help bring blood flow, which can make the nipple a lot more sensitive too. And then yes, I had some people use electric shocks on the nipples 
that is advanced nipple play because you really want to trust your partner for that. I mean, that's kind of getting in to some of our kink stuff. Um, and I think any, any average vibrator is a great way for women to start this process with themselves because you can literally just put your vibrator on there and see what works for you and figuring out what works for you as part of the game here. Mm. And then you can bring that to your partner too. But yeah, an old fashioned Jackrabbit 2000 will get things going too. You can break out the sucker devices, the new clitoral I sucking devices. Ask about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just, you can break that out too. Yeah. I have a favorite and I just got Emma one for her birthday. Yeah. So it is perfect oh. nipple shape. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So you can use that. And then some women I have, they actually still have their breast pumps from when they were pregnant and they'll break that out just to kind of get things kind of blood flowed and erect down there too. And that's totally fine as well. So isn't all, it may be actually from the baby store, not just from the sex shop, but yeah. it's all viable <laughs> options. Just go to target in the baby <laughs> section and get yourself a breast pump. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I know what I'm throwing tonight. So there's so many things yeah. that you can do. You've really opened up my mind. Opened it oh my up. God. <laughs> we want to get into the, the big Lebowski. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. So we go. are, you know, we're playing with our nipples. I've never thought of playing with my nipples in order to reach orgasm though. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how does that work? So it's interesting. So nipple gasm, the idea is that you can have an orgasm from your nipples is actually been around a long time. And actually the people that used to use it were actually the people that the very strict religious people that didn't want to have any intercourse or vaginal play, they used to use their nipples because that was pretty safe, right? You couldn't get pregnant from it and you could still have a great time. And the thing is, they're all kind of on the same nerve line. So if we were dogs, then we would have a line of nipples going straight down all the way down into like the pelvis. So when you look at your puppy, she's got all those little nipples down the side, that actually is the whole nipple line. And that's what the nerve is. The nerve actually reaches all the way down into the uterus and the clitoris and the vagina. So you can directly stimulate all those areas by working on the nipples. Oh, Oh my God. Wow. So with enough, with enough massage and playing with the nipples, you're either one for playing what's going to happen later down South and actually extending the vagina, getting the vagina ready for more orgasms, or you can actually fully orgasm once you kind of get used to it just from nipples alone. So when you say kind of get used to it, do you mean like that much nipple stimulation? Like once you're used to like focusing for an extended amount of time? Exactly. When you've kind of found your Zen for it, you know, like, so we're all taking our vibrators tonight to the bedroom, right? And we're all going to sit there and play with our own nipples. And at first you'd be like, oh, it's a little sensitive. I need to stop. And that's okay. You know, we say the same thing with sex, right? They're not always every time is, it, is everything ready for everything. So as you start to kind of get to know what your nipples like, just the first, like the first time you masturbated, you didn't really know what you were going to fully do. And then now, you, you know, women can masturbate and orgasm in less than three minutes because they know their bodies and they know what it needs to take. You'll be able to do that with your nipples as well. Dang. I, both of y'all have your mouths like open. <laughs> well, I had no idea that it could be something that you got used to enough like masturbation where it could go yeah. within minutes. Well, and that makes sense that like, because for me, I'm like, no, there's no way that I could orgasm for my nipples. Like there's no way that I could have a nipple orgasm, but it's not something that I like practice, practice or have tried. And it's like, did I have an orgasm the first time I masturbated? No, I yeah. did not. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if well, I would even call it masturbation. It's just, you know, it's practice, but right? It's just practice, exactly. practice, practice. Yeah. Cause I also thought that this was going to involve a lot of like mindful breathing and like getting yourself there mentally. Cause I didn't think that you could only have an orgasm from your nipples from like sensation alone. It would have to be spiritual. It'd have to be a <laughs> spiritual thing. So the fact that it can just be like getting used to that sensation feels like a superpower that I have yet to uncover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and does it yeah. feel like how a clitoral orgasm could feel like very, does it feel like down to your vulva yeah so you know it's the the you know since the nipple activates the same areas of the brain the genital sensory cortex as everything else down south penis vulva vagina other genitals 
then absolutely it can feel like a vaginal orgasm, more like a vaginal orgasm than a full like clitoral orgasm. It's going to be a deeper, kind of a deeper orgasm. And um, I forgot to mention earlier that feathers are really good too. Feathers are excellent. I bet. I mean, I wouldn't go find a pigeon, like a dead pigeon on the road and like grab a feather, but I'm saying like, you know, a really nice feather, you know, like. So don't find the dead bird carcass and pluck. Yeah, that seems like a recipe for an infection of some kind. It's not a DIY situation. (laughs) Okay. Go on Amazon. I'm sure they have feathers. Okay, great. (laughs) Note. Perfect. Okay. It's like a deeper feeling. That is crazy. That's incredible. That's incredible. Is there a best way to reach a nipple orgasm or is it like your, your mouth versus your fingers? Um, I think a combination is probably the best, you know, like I, I don't personally like, you know, a lot of women will orgasm with just pure oral sex alone, but I think it's nice to like mix it up. Right. Like I just kind of, I'm like a fan of the mix it up kind of girl kind of stuff. So, um, but you can absolutely, you can do just mouth. Now, a lot of men, I mean, I'm sure we have lesbian couples that listen here too, but a lot of men, they kind of just go straight for the, uh, I'm just going to like breastfeed on you, which is not going to do it like that's just not going to be enough so you're going to have to have a really a partner that's really into the very nuanced like light touch licking again same same guy who hopefully is down on your clit because you know you know how some guys can just be like (laughs) hot breath and like you're like that's not doing anything dude so you know it's going to be but it's also kind of fun because the nipples are just you don't have to worry about like how it smells. A lot of women are worried about how they smell down there when they're getting oral sex. And so, you know, most everyone's boobs smell like everything else of theirs. And so it's also a lot, um, it's more fun to kind of play with it a little bit. So I think when people are playing, they'll use different things more because, you know, I would say don't expect the orgasm, don't for the nipple gasm but it's the, it's like the awesome, like after show, because everything else is going to feel really good too. So the light touch, the feathers going harder, maybe nipple clamps eventually, you know, if that's right for you. And if it's not, then that's fine. Maybe light biting. It doesn't have to be anything. You can just also pinch, Mm -hmm. you know, we don't have to go buy a bunch of fancy stuff. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, chip clips and all that. I wouldn't again, probably use chip clips on my nipples, but I mean, you could in a pinch. (laughs) <laughs> didn't even play that one. My chip clips are scary. Yeah, you guys got yeah. Some pretty gold ones mm-hmm. that I think are actually for office use because I just like the way they look better. I won't be using those. Like those ones that you have to like unclamp from the sides and then you, you pin yeah, them, like pin yeah. Them. And some of them like actually have like teeth. And I wouldn't yeah. do that. You know? No teeth. Don't encourage. No them. teeth. No teeth. You know, nice and smooth things. It is definitely less vulnerable, at least in my head. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, like, I totally get the, I'd be willing to try different things Mm -hmm. too. Yeah. But that gave me two other questions. So the first one was, if you are, you know, engaging in nipple play on somebody, would you be, if you're like using your mouth on one, should you be using your hand on the other? Should you be always like just simultaneously like doing both nipples? Yeah, I get your question. Like, should yeah. like both both of them get love at the same exactly. time kind of thing? Exactly. Um, I wouldn't. I mean, you okay. can, absolutely. It's a lot of work for the person that's doing it because you're trying to like lick here and like lightly rub there and it may start to become too much on one or the other. I would just focus attention on one breast and then move to the other one before they've actually nipple gasm, you know, move it back and forth so that, you know, both of them are getting that that sensory upload to the brain. Um, but yeah, that could be kind of like patting your head and rubbing your tummy. It could get like yeah. difficult after a while. And then you might find that it's just too much. So I would stick with one breast than the other. I'm glad I but, asked because in my head, I was like, you gotta do both. I you actually, can't nipple gasm yeah. without both. I, I now I have this total yeah. picture in my head. I'm like thinking what licking, and then you're kind of like wax on, wax off on the other side, like Mr. Miyagi. And you're like, I don't, I, that would be hard for me. Mm-hmm. But yeah. hey, if like the ranch fountain, if we can build it, let's do it. <laughs> if we can do it, I'm yeah. in. I'm in. My other question was, you know, I have alluded to the size of my breasts. Uh, <laughs> they're like smaller. They're small. Um, <laughs> does that matter? Does size 
matter in terms of ability to have a nipple orgasm or like to experience pleasure from nipple play? You know, I don't think that size matters. Okay. Because your nipple and your areola should be really the average size. It's just the actual fibroglandular breast tissue that will be smaller on a woman. So I say you have just as good a time as everyone else does. <laughs> yes. There you go, Cass. Yay. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> that was for both of us. Yeah. Don't look at that. <laughs> Two ladies, four small breasts, right? <laughs> But I'm glad you asked about like dual stimulation too, because in my head, I was picturing both being stimulated with Mm -hmm. nipple play, but not necessarily picturing how both were getting stimulated. Mm -hmm. So, but with one getting like mouth and the other getting like fingers, the fingers one would feel like rug burn after a while. I feel like unless you use the oil, unless you use the oil, but I just don't like too much focus with fingers. I don't mind mm-hmm. a lot of focus with the mouth or the tongue, but with fingers, I don't like that a lot. Yeah. So that was good. good yeah. Time. I'm going to, I'm just really excited to use the, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm really excited to use the Foria arousal oil. That's yeah. how, it, cause it like, that's good down there. So <laughs> I'm really excited to see what it's like up here. Up, <laughs> up her. And I think, you know, honestly, like there's so much that we haven't even approached with nipples yet that that there's all kinds of things out there that we can start doing with them that we just haven't ever done before. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. So on that same coin, is there anything that like we didn't bring up about nipple orgasms or nipple play that you feel like needs to be talked about? Well, you know, one thing I'm, I'm really cautious about with my patients is, you know, um, lack of orgasm and orgasmia shame. So I always tell them if you don't orgasm nipple gasm from your nipples, It doesn't mean that you're broken. It doesn't mean that they don't work or that you've done it wrong. It just may be that we haven't found the right thing for you yet with your nipples. So kind of like when you first start masturbating, you didn't always orgasm. And sometimes you just don't feel like orgasming. Like you're like, oh, fuck it. I'm just getting, I'm done for the day. It's just not going to happen. Same thing with the nipple orgasm. You know, I, now that there's these A spots and the U spots and the G and everyone thinks, oh my God, I have to keep up with all these spots and have all these spot orgasms. Same thing with the nipple orgasm. They're great and they're just fun to play with. And if you don't nipple orgasm, it's not a big deal. It's going to feel good regardless. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good to know. Definitely. Not everything has to be successful for mm-hmm. you, but I think everything, if you're interested, is worth a shot. Exactly. It's, it's the journey, not the destination that always yeah. kind of matters. Yes, absolutely. I'm just so excited. I haven't thought, I don't know. It's just crazy how little I've thought about my nipples. And I'm really grateful that we spent some time thinking about them, not mm-hmm. mine in particular, but everybody <laughs> of Cass's nipples. Um, do you have any other questions? I don't. Okay. You mm-hmm. covered so much. So where can our listeners continue to connect with you <laughs> after this episode? Because oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Dr. Heather Bartos, and I have my own, uh, I'll call it my blog, my podcast blog, and I'm trying to make that be a real world, but Webster didn't pick it up this year. Uh, my own blog, The Knee Spot, which is on Apple and Spotify, where I basically just talk about all this random shit once a week. And um, the one I'm coming up soon is uh, threesomes. We've done squirting. We've done regret and shame. So it's just kind of a visit to the gyno's office, but a lot more fun. <laughs> yes, it is really fun. I have listened to your podcast and I really, really enjoy it. So. It's nice to hear about that stuff from a doctor when you maybe haven't heard that type of talk from your doctors. Exactly. So it's great. Yes. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for being on today. This is so much fun. My pleasure. You ladies are awesome. I can't wait to hear a feedback when you try this. Oh my oh, God. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm very excited <laughs> to use the Satisfier Pro. My yeah. <laughs>